Hi there, Robin here from Expert On. Today we're going to be talking about this right here, which is the Alto TS315S subwoofer. Their 2000 watt peak, 1000 watt continuous RMS subwoofer. 15 inch driver built into a solid MDF frame. Uh, incredible package. Is it worth upgrading? Is it worth buying a new subwoofer? Is it worth buying this subwoofer over all the other ones in the 15 inch? Well, if you're in this price range, you're probably going to want to watch this video. So here we are. This is the TS315S. Looking at it from the back because beyond, we're going to get all the sound on the back. This is looking under the hood right here. This is the amp plate. This is what's going to make everything in the front side sound so good. And it has to do all with what's going on up here. We do have a ton of power in here. We've got a thousand watts of power going on here. This is 50% more than previous. We had three, uh, sorry, we had 650 watts uh of power and that's gone up to now a thousand watts so that's 350 watts extra roughly about 50 percent more power that's going to get us more dbs out of the front side of the system it's going to be able to carry a larger space with more base so icing on the cake though and this is really what's important besides just giving it more power which would have been good enough they decided to throw in a DSP into this model. Now the 18 inch also carries the exact same feature setup. And the important thing is, is that it's built to go exactly as a matching set with your top. Now you can definitely buy this on its own because it does have a high pass and a bypass right here. But if you're lucky enough to be putting this with either the 308 or the 310, 12 or 15, then you're gonna get to use the added benefits of using the built-in contours and dsp settings for the matching set what does that mean at the end of the day is let's say let's just toss it between the 10 and the 12 inch because it already knows what the crossover points for that particular speaker is because well they built it and they know the recipe uh, they can match that up with the proper crossover so i mean if you had a dial and you knew exactly what hertz frequency to set it at you could probably manually dial it in maybe get it right but I mean, these are engineers. This is what they do. They design and engineer things into a product, put it onto a chip, get the whole thing processed, and make it automatic. So all you have to do is press the button and choose the appropriate one for you. So this means that we'll be a little more active on the 310 versus, let's say, the 312. And then at the same time with the 315, allowing you to get the most volume possible out of the top with maximizing base performance, not just on the top, but on the bottom as well. The button. That's what it's going to do. Now, we still have, just like we had on previous models, another brand. So, it's not, not unique to, to anything here. It's polarity and reverse. And that really for getting the sound in phase with the rest of the room, with your tops. That's what's going on here. People ask, you know, depends on how you set up your subwoofer, where it's placed, and if you want it to be in phase or out phase with the rest of them in reverse. So, that's what's going to go on there. Extended low frequencies. This is a feature that I like and dislike at the same time. I like the fact that it's there because if we're not driving the system very strong, uh, we just want to have uh, a background music level and, you know, but we want to still have that punchiness out of it. Uh, then you definitely can engage that and that'll increase all the low frequencies. It'll just drive more into it and punch up a bit. Now, of course, I wouldn't, if I'm going past zero dB, which is halfway up the volume scale here, I would probably want to make sure that's off. This way it can really maximize the power and the performance of the actual subwoofer on the front. Move down one here. Now we're going to get into our line inputs. Just like before, they use combo jacks. So regardless if you have quarter inch or XLR cables, you'll be able to plug either ones of them into here. And then you have outputs. So if we were running some altos on top or something else, we want to take advantage of using the high pass or one of the presets for Alto's products, uh, you basically would run your controller mixer into here, input one, input two, and then you'd run your two speakers off of here. Now, if you had four speakers, you would then go to those speakers and run two on the left and then two on the right uh, as in and out on those as well. So we've got our combo jack. So regardless of what we're going to plug in, we've got the ability to do that. And then our output as well. Now, if you just want to do a pass through, let's say you had two subs. Well, that's fine. You can just pass through out of here uh, and go into another sub if you want. And that's what's going to go on there. Or if maybe you don't want to uh, mess around with your tops, you can certainly just do the bypass and it'll just bypass the processor and just go straight in, straight out. That's all that's going to happen. Uh, 
Then at the bottom, your AC power cord, I've left it off this time, so this way you can actually see that located right below it, right there. Uh, that's the actual tray that carries the fuse. Now, all of these speakers have it set up that way, uh, but if you've ever been looking for, I'm not getting any power at all, you want to take a small little screwdriver, get in there, flick that out, uh, and there's usually a spare fuse for emergencies located in there, and you can swap it out, and you're all good. Of course, the on-off switch. Now, when we get about the material, uh, there was lots of talk uh, on the preview video about the material, and again, uh, it's MDF, not plywood on the outside, but I did open it up and take a look at what's going on. Everything that everything is connected to, so this amp is not connected to MDF. There's actually plywood framed all the way around internally, 10 ply to be exact, I counted. Uh, that is connected to that material. Uh, and the reason why that's important is MDF is not really a great material for screwing in and out of. Uh, if you have any uh, pressure or you over tighten it, you can easily strip out the screws. So what they've done is, it's all glued by the way. I did check that as well. Everything, everything, all the seams have been glued uh, not just nail, brad nail together. It's all been glued up nice and tight. Um, same thing here. That's all been glued the plywood to the MDF, allowing this to be secured properly. Uh, inside as well, this is important when we actually spin the box, uh, the handles. They took out the metal handles they had before, which were just on the surface for something that was, uh, was stronger actually, and allowed them to do something in addition on the inside. This, this is double purpose. By having this, when we have something that's over an inch thick to grab onto, it makes it nice and comfortable to pick up straightforward. They give you the ability to go up, which is easiest, but if you're also stuck, you can pick it up on its side that way. Um, internally, another box built inside. It's an MDF. On both sides, you have a framed box internally, and then there's a cross support to hold the actual box's shape, to keep it from bulging under pressure from the actual woofer in the front. Uh, it allows it to not stress out and not get distorted, because over time, if you're using constantly uh, four hours per gig every week, uh, that adds and builds up stress onto the box and it can lose some of its qualities. So that's what's going on here. I thought I'd just mention that because that was a really good thing. Uh, the paint job, we'll get it on a bit of an angle here first. The paint job is a, uh, it's, it's a Dura spray. So what that really means is basically, uh, it's the first, the primer coat is more like an alcohol base. Uh, so I looked this up. This is what doesn't uh, allow the MDF to swell or distort when it's actually getting applied. Uh, and then there's a secondary spray that's put on top of that, which is this texture finish, uh, not like sandpaper, more like speckled little glossiness to it everywhere, uh, which basically allows the speaker to be rubbed, but not actually damage the surface. Uh, basically, they were kind of listening to people with the previous model who said it was really, really nice, like it's a showroom quality finish. But I mean, if you rubbed it with your hand, uh, it would look dirty. So they came up with this, which is the next level of durability. Uh, is it the nicest thing to have in the showroom? No. Is it nice to have at home? That's okay. If you're taking it out on the show, you get a cover for it. You're going to transport no problem. But if anything did happen to it, you'll be fine. So that's the important thing is just to give you a more durable, uh, rugged finish on the actual product while keeping it look, sorry, keeping it looking nice as long as possible. So that's what's going on there. Brings us full circle back to the grill. No. Uh, the cosmetics of the grill really didn't change. Uh, the gauge may be a little bit thicker. Uh, I did compare it. it. It seems similar, but I gotta say their product, when it comes to grills, they don't cheap out on it. It's a standard texture pattern that you have on so much, uh, so many of these products out there. Sorry. Uh, so, but it's not flimsy. You can't, it's almost impossible to dent it. Now, the important thing is, is that we're also worried about, um, vibration. Uh, we don't want all this base being generated and then it hitting uh, something made out of metal because it'll just, it'll create this odd harmonics and it'll just sound distorted and loose. So they spray attach a padding to the back. Now you think it's just a sponge, but it is. And at the same time, it acts as a dampener. So I have pre-removed the eight screws that are in front. You know, do not do this part at home, you know, because we don't want you to damage anything, but hey, what you do is yours. Um, there is a sponge liner on the front here, uh, placed across end to end, right up against basically foams, rubber seams on the ends. Um, this is all about not having any vibration 
distort the sound of this woofer when it has to go through this grill. So it's not just for, you know, uh, you know, looking nice. It also serves a very good purpose in making sure that this thing is going to last. We'll put this down over here. There you go. Cover off. Not as sexy as with the cover on it. Eh? Much more attractive. Leave your cover on. Don't take it off. So here, people have been asking about the ports, and they're roughly in the, you know, four inch range. Two ports on both sides. They, they extend virtually three quarters of the way down the actual unit to the back. This way to generate as much balanced sound coming out of the front as possible. Uh, and then the driver itself, uh, like any good driver and subwoofer like this, it's going to be made out of a composite cardboard material. This is going to allow us to get the best low frequencies possible. Uh, also, uh, a good subwoofer in a product like this would not have a um, rubber expansion seal on the side, which basically it's the tension release on the side of the driver that connects it to the actual body frame on the outside. Um, they actually use a machine that compresses this whole thing into one. This has uh, fibers embedded into it, and it also has its rubber spray added on top of it. All of that is to allow this to have the utmost flexibility, but staying completely stable with the actual coil, which is inside the magnet in the back. That being said, uh, I did look at the magnet. It is definitely 20, 30% larger, if not more than previous. So there is an upgrade in that as well. So that's everything for here. Um, this little wire here, it's hot glued in place to make sure it doesn't get pulled or loosened. Uh, that is what's going to plug into the, just underneath the Alto to say that it is on. That gets attached right there. So that's what's going on there. By the way, uh, yes, MDF, MDF, right in the middle here. We do have plywood again. Why? Because it's an attaching point. Screws have to go in here. They didn't want to have that MDF because that's not a good thing for screws. So again, they could have hit that and not worried about it. Just, you know, screw the cover into MDF, but they decided to have this as plywood. So there and there, plywood again. And there we go. That's everything for here right now. Now, of course, there's a standard pole mount in the top. That is metal. That is straightforward. Uh, it's on four big rubber feet, which I had to actually put some carpet down so I can do this spinning around because it wouldn't move uh, without it. Uh, if you don't want to lug it around, it is 78 and a half pounds. I checked the box. Uh, you can replace the bottom feet with blue bushing casters. So. Uh, they're available in a whole bunch of places, but you, the, you need bushings, not bearings. The reason why is you don't want them to rattle and you can lock them down. You don't have to worry. Some people do put the feet on the back, but I'm at a point now where I think might as well have rolling, big flat rolling feet at the bottom uh, that you can just lock down. Um, you know, we're not, we're not pushing base through the floor. We're compressing the air in the room. So I'm not worried. As long as the caster's locked down and you want to replace it, by all means, take your time and attention and do a nice job and you'll be fine. So that's if you want to be able to easily roll it around once you get it into a, a space. All right, so here we are. All complicated and all set up in the back to make it as good as possible. And yes, there's crazy equipment all in front between the camera and the subwoofer, which is all the way down here. Uh, so for today, I'm going to be using a handheld microphone to do this, to help out, and also for the fact that we are having issues with our UHF in our building. Now, we do have neighbors. We're, uh, you know, a commercial complex, and for some particular reason, somebody's got a new machine, and it is just causing havoc on the UHF frequency just tight in where all the microphones are, so it doesn't matter which one I use. I am finding problems. So we've uh, gone and grabbed our actual XVID, uh, which happens to work on 2.4 gigahertz. So that's working out really, really well, no problem. So if you're looking for an alternative or a backup system, uh, so in case this ever happens to you, uh, this XVID really fixed the problem. So back to what we got going on. I've on the arm here, down below, right here, NPM 3000. For the subwoofers, we've learned that over the videos that it's best to have a microphone up close to the subwoofer. In this case, it is six feet away. But, you know, uh, closer than having it back with the camera, which is closer to 12 feet, 16 feet. So that's what's going on here. Uh, it's just to help get the bass response in the actual audio track. So that's what we can have a good representation of what it really kind of feels like. Down here, right in front of it, you can't see it, but I'll swing this out of the way. I've got another camera set up here right on top of a level meter. 
and this level meter is three feet away from the actual speaker and it's going to be measuring the db so the first part of the video is going to be a quick little reference 30 seconds we're going to have the subwoofer at 75 percent we're going to have the blast king which i put on top to show that you can put any speaker on top of here and by the way the blast king's here for a future video uh, we're going to be talking about this new product from them which is really exciting but for now i want to show that you can put any top with this subwoofer so it'll be here we're only going to have this guy on at 25 percent so we're really, this is what's doing all the work. That meter is going to be reading off of that and giving us a good simultaneous reading between the demo and, of course, the meter shot. Uh, after that, we'll do a couple of tests. We're going to put a uh, TS-315 on top and a TS-310 on top. And the idea is that it really shouldn't sound any different simply for the fact that the DSP built into the subwoofer is going to compensate and balance out that sound for us. All right, so there we go. So that was the first part, 100 dBs on a 15 inch, uh, one meter. That's kind of, you know, real world. So yes, they do talk a lot louder than that, but that's what pink noise, and if you have Spotify, well, of course you're on YouTube, just listen to what pink noise is. Just a constant sound. Um, so I prefer real world. Uh, what's it actually gonna be like when you take this out with you? So what do we have up here right now? This is the, oh, and can I say one more thing? The Blast King. Was that not awesome? I mean, that is going to be a fun video when we do the Blast King 1,200-watt uh, speaker and real 1,200 watts. If it was in comparison to other brands, it would be advertised as 2,400 watts of peak power. But no, they, again, company out of Florida, they want to be realistic, competitive. When you get that product, it's going to blow your mind, and the video is going to be awesome. So, sorry, let's get back to this. Alto TS310. This is what we got on top. So this is a great popular speaker. So many people buy this speaker. So we're going to have it set at Unity, 12 o'clock, straight up the dial. Uh, no added extra. We're not. We're, we're just running it at 50%. When it comes to overall power output, we're not going to be pushing this at all. We've got the subwoofer itself set at three quarters because I'm not a big fan of 100% of anything. But three quarters is what we got this set up as. And now I'm going to push the button and set it up into the TS310 mode on the DSP. So there we go. We're going to take a listen to this. Then we're going to follow this video right away up with the 315. So we're going to switch it to the 315. And we're going to have that on top. And then we'll bring it back to the table. One, one. Coming daily under pressure Breaking on the plot and the scheme The true stock trademark is at the edge of your dreams I'm talking one One shot for the kill The priest come freeze up Straight drop and the chills I'm talking Taking over pieces and shares of all the sky high Check the movement is here into reality in the lab with the formula in chemistry the memories spark and motivate and make the industry shake you put the bars in the place i'm talking one one chance at best yes painting princess for the culture keep the brushes fresh flip the cover with the drum of passion never rest freedom is a teacher under pressure not be blessed see how we're so good for the go it's one heart one shot now the future is yours go yeah it's one heart one shot Coming daily under pressure Breaking on the plot and the scheme The 
Again, at the end of the day, my personal opinion is uh, basically great, awesome. I mean, if you want to have something that's reasonably easy to carry around, yes, it does weigh 78 pounds, but it is a 15 inch. So, you know, you're looking at about 20 inches tall, 20 inches wide, 24 inches deep, much easier to handle because it kind of matches up size wise with your tops probably already. So that's really nice. So if I was going to put the whole thing in a boat, absolutely not a bad way to spend your money. Uh, not overpriced. I think they jacked up the price anywhere between 20 and $50, depending on where you live. Uh, so we'll have links for that down below to help you out with that, but definitely worth getting your hands on. Uh, and if you don't buy one right away, you definitely want, you know, you get a chance, ask for it by name. I'd like to listen to the 15 inch Alto TS 315 because definitely worth having a tool with. Uh, so there you go. I hope this video helped out like all the other ones. And uh, if you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. We're going to be starting to do live shows soon. Uh, and we're also going to do Q&As uh, in the morning. So easy way to see if your uh, questions have been answered. Look for those. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.